Well, now that the federal cabinet has set up a special committee to deal with uh, the MS 63 issue, do you think this is the right approach? Um, definitely it's the right approach because from what I understand, um, about 30 years ago um, in the parliament, they actually brought up a revision where they actually reduced the position of the two Sabah and Sarawak um, from the status where they are equal partners to just a normal state. So having a new um, initiative to, to revise back what was done is just to undo what was taken away. And mm -hmm. I think that is something that... Um, I'm glad it's happening and finally we are getting the exposure that we've been, um, the normal people has been calling out for in our state for the past few yeah. years. And um, it's sad that it happened, but I'm just really um, glad that they are willing to take a look at this and, and view Sabah and Trao as equal partners once again. But this is really interesting because one of the problems with this cabinet committee is that it is uh, top heavy, as in a lot of politicians are involved in the process. Mm. So the normal people are actually not involved in the process. How do you feel about that, Villa? Um, okay, I have to. I I need to sort of justify here that um, the political landscape currently, and I'm talking about the national yeah. political landscape, uh, is encouraging simply because uh, I feel that. that for the very first time, people feel a little more empowered to really voice their opinions. Hence, you know, speaking up on social media and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but as an anthropologist that's worked on Sabah for a very long time, um, I can't help but sort of pick up this huge theme of mistrust. And I think mm -hmm. a, a lot of it really goes back to this huge issue of, yeah, you know, committees and whatnot are, are, are sandiwaras, you know, they're, 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 they're shows put on. Um, and you know, I, I, more than anything, I want to see change. I yeah. want to know that this conversation um, within the committees, and I understand there are three committees formed, right? There's a steering committee, and then there's a technical and a working committee, right? And they're represented by mem MPs in Sabah, there, there's representation from, uh, uh, I believe, uh, civil servants, and right at the very top, you'll have the Prime Minister and all the major uh, uh, ministers all coming together. I think the, the problem here is that um, MA63 today uh, results in a lot of real world, real life issues that mm. can't necessarily be, um, um, how do I say, articulated uh, in such a way that, 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 that politicians and policy makers understand them. Yeah. I feel that for this committee to really work, you have to have a conversation with the people in Sabah and Sarawak who've suffered the most from it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, um, apart from the, the capitals, Kuching and Kota Kinabalu, you have the majority of Sabah and Sarawak not enjoying the sort of progression and development uh, in their personal lives, in their professional lives, with their families, through work, uh, simply as a result of the amendments made on the MA63. So if this committee is to work, it has to engage with the very people who have to live with it or live under it. You know, that's, that's essentially how I feel. This is really quite interesting in terms of the cabinet committee because one of the things that you hear constantly about this political committee is that the very same people who sit in the committee were members of the previous regime. Right. And most people accept the fact that uh, the previous regime, especially the former political leaders of Sabah and Sarawak, were actually the very same people who gave out a lot of the state yes. powers yeah. to the federal yeah. government. So how do we resolve this contradiction? Christine? Um, okay, I don't have the definite answers, but I can see that one of the main problems here is political interference. And when political, political interference came in, our um, ulterior motive to implement MX history in our government is currently quite blurred because we don't really have um, a group that we can trust on to enforce mm -hmm. MS63 in our government. Because if we read news nowadays, there are sort of political propagandas like uh, pointing fingers from different political parties and thus um, making the citizens uh, don't know what's the truth anymore in this mm -hmm. situation. 
So, in my opinion, we need a leader that can bring us to move forward instead of playing MS63 as a political tools, you know. And if I may suggest to everyone in Malaysia, especially the youngsters, we gather together, we join in a group, make a movement, but we are not against the government, but we simply help the government implement MS63 rather than waiting um, those like in higher position in government to do something mm. about it. Um, just now, um, you're saying about tech, uh, steering committee, cabinet committee. Maybe youngsters like us can do something about it too. Like we have social media, we can uh, put the awareness in social media. You know. And I think students in high school also can be exposed to these kind of things. You know. And mm. not just us who already work. So, I, I think that um, for a committee to have some form of more neutral um, stance, not even neutral stance, I want to say credibility, yeah. it has to be a combination of yes, policy makers, because ultimately it is policy, yeah. um, and we, we need to have scholars, scholars, historians who are able to like properly like study, um, you know, like what went on back then, look through like, you know, old, old like, you know, articles, whatever that was written by it and actually give us an educated and neutral um, you know, opinion on what they have discovered as well as like, you know, has been mentioned, the common person who, yeah. has, to, who has to deal with this stuff you know, on a day-to-day on a -day basis. The people back in Sabah and Sarawak who have been so badly affected by, you know, by, by some of the, the um, I would say, effects of having like, most of our rights signed away. You know, and yeah. just like not having equal um, opportunities distributed to people over there, we, we all should have a say. In yes, this. but the issue is really, um, is it possible to look at something in history and an agreement that was written in the 60s and try to apply it to the 21st century? Or we is it better the going the forward? Or is it better going forward and look at a new model for federal state relationship? 